the first thing you need to know is that the tan of some angle can be written as the sine of that angle over the cos of that angle. That's a trig identity that you should know at this point if you're dealing with graphing the tan function. This turns out to be the key to making this a nice simple exercise. The reason why we want to write tan in this way is because it allows us to analyze the function in terms of both its vertical asymptotes and its x-intercepts. I'm going to start by looking at where tan has vertical asymptotes. And this is kind of strange for a periodic function to have vertical asymptotes, but because tan is the ratio of sine over cos, we can have zero on the bottom. In this case, we're looking at when cos is equal to zero. That would be where the vertical asymptotes are. I'm hoping you've seen the graph of cosine before in radians. The idea here is that if I sub in pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on and so on and so on, into cos, I get zero. Now, because cos is in the denominator of my expression of sine over cos, also known as tan, I'm going to get zero on the bottom at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on, which means that I've got vertical asymptotes at those points. The next thing I'm going to consider is when does this thing have x-intercepts? Remember, x-intercepts happen when y is equal to zero. So if I consider y equals tan theta to be my function and I set y equal to zero, I'm looking for when tan of theta is equal to zero. Because I'm rewriting tan as sine over cos, I'm going to set sine over cos equal to zero. When I do this, I'm trying to solve for the angle that makes this zero. I can multiply cos up to the other side, effectively removing it from the equation entirely because I've got zero times cos. I'm now solving for when sine of theta is equal to zero. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to the graph of sine of x, and I'm hoping again that you have some understanding of what this looks like in radians. And I'm looking for the cases where this graph is equal to zero. I know that happens every pi, so zero, pi, two pi, and so on. And as a result of that, tan should have x-intercepts at zero, pi, two pi, and so on. So I'm just going to represent those on the graph that I'm getting this sort of repeated pattern of x-intercepts every pi radians. So the rest is just to fill in what's happening between these vertical asymptotes. In order to do that, I can use the idea that this is just a function. I can sub in different x values or different theta values, different angles, and see what I get out. And I'm going to do that strategically. I'm not going to just pick random numbers. I'm going to pick random angles that make sense to graph if I'm graphing a trig function. So I'm looking at pi over 2 here. I'm going to first just graph something in between 0 and pi over 2. I'm going to pick pi over 4, mainly because it makes sense for my scale. I've got 0, I've got pi over 2. Halfway in between there would be pi over 4. Also, I know pi over 4 is a special angle. Looking back at special triangles, I know that the tan of pi over 4 is 1. You can also punch pi over 4 into your calculator and take the tan of it in radians, and you'll see that you get 1. I'm just going to plot that point right here. If I continue doing this strategically with different angles, you'll see that this graph looks like this, which at first glance kind of looks like a parabola, but it actually continues in the negative direction as we go toward the previous vertical asymptote. And like I said, you can just sub in different values. If I sub in negative pi over 4, I'm going to get negative 1. That's what's going to happen is it's going to continue in both directions like that. And because this thing is a periodic function, I'm going to make the assumption that this is going to continue in this way every time I repeat through a cycle. That's sort of the idea with tan. You can start by looking at the vertical asymptotes, which you get by writing tan as sine over cos. You can find the x-intercepts just by looking at when sine is equal to zero. The rest is just subbing in angles strategically to find out where the function happens to live. That's the idea with graphing the tan function. Hoping this one helped. Check out a few of the other videos I'm going to be doing, graphing cosecant, secant, and cotangent, and some of those other crazy trig functions. Hey.